Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the replication cycle of influenza virus. Okay, so before I, we begin our discussion of how the virus particle is going to uh, enter the cell, I want to do a bit more of an in-depth uh, analysis of this protein hemagglutinin, because hemagglutinin is going to be the protein that binds to um, a uh, molecule on the surface of human cells, basically, and it's going to be how uh, the virus particle enters the cell. Right, so let's have a look at hemagglutinin. So, hemagglutinin is a, uh, a homo uh, sorry, not a homo a homo trimer. So, it's this sort of cylindrical protein, like this, as I've drawn it up there in pink. Okay, but it's made up of three separate pieces. So let me draw this like so. So, here are the three separate pieces that it's made up of, these third, uh, each one of them making up a third of the hemagglutinin. So, it's what's known as a homo trimer, because these three, um, three proteins that make up the whole hemagglutinin molecule, they are all exactly the same. So, that's the origin of homo trimer. Trimer means uh, three things together. Homo means the same. So, this is a homo trimer. Okay, so let me just highlight this in. Right, and what we're now going to do is look at the structure of one of these subunits in a little bit more detail. So there are these three proteins making up our hemagglutinin molecule. Okay, now we're going to take one of these out and look at its structure in a bit more detail. So basically, the structure of hemagglutinin, if we look at it, the structure of it within the membrane, what we can look at it as is it looks kind of like this has a globular head, and then it has uh, a portion here that uh, is just linear, basically. Now, this head here is what's known as hemagglutinin 2, or HA2, so hemagglutinin 2. And this linear portion is what's known as hemagglutinin 1. So, in effect, what you have is three of these all sort of uh, bound together in this, uh, in this trimer, basically, in this homo trimer. Okay, and uh, this bit here is the bit that faces the center. So, um, let me, how can I show this? So, the central bit here let me, will be made up of three of these portions here. These just these sort of linear portions, which are alpha helices, by the way. So, this is an alpha helix. Okay, so these alpha helices are in the center. Okay, so you have these three alpha helices from these three subunits making up the center. And then around the outside, then, are these three globular portions here. Okay, so I'll highlight this in blue. So you have these three blue portions around like that, making up the uh, hemagglutinin uh, homo trimer, basically. Okay, now, whoops. This um, hemagglutinin 2 portion, which is this globular head, is the portion that's actually going to bind to uh, the molecule on the human cells. Okay, so now what we need to do is discuss uh, what, uh, what molecule, basically, is on human cells that hemagglutinin is going to bind to. And it's a molecule known as sialic acid. Okay, so if we draw our viral particle coming along here, and we'll begin the discussion of how it's going to get into cells. So here's our viral particle. Here's our capsid here. Okay. Right. Uh, here's our um, negative sense RNA genome and our uh, RNA-dependent RNA polymerase here. So this is in pink here. Okay. And then in turquoise, we have our RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. Okay. And then we have our hemagglutinin sticking out here. Okay, so um, the hemagglutinin is going to bind to a sialic acid molecule, which is in the membrane of our cell, of our target cell. So let's say this is a sialic acid molecule here. So this is sialic acid. Acid. And this basically, this is the cell membrane of the victim cell. So this is the cell that, or the host cell is the fancy way of saying the cell that's going to be, um, going to be um, invaded by this virus particle. So here what we have is this hemagglutinin protein in the surface 
uh, in the viral envelope of our virion particle, okay? And this here is cyanic acid, and we draw cyanic acid in blue. Now, it's the hemagglutinin 2 portion that is going to bind to cyanic acid, basically. Okay, so hemagglutinin binds to cyanic acid, and what now happens, basically, is that the uh, virion is going to be endocytosed by receptor-mediated endocytosis. So, if we draw the whole cell now, just to illustrate this, so if this is our host cell here, what's going to happen is that this is sort of going to invaginate in and it's going to swallow the virus particles. So let me show this in another picture here. So it's going to swallow the virus particle like so. Okay, so there's our cell now. Here's our virion particle again, with our nucleocapsid in the center. So this capsid here with the negative sense RNA and the RNA uh, dependent RNA polymerase still at the center there. So there's our enzyme there. Here's our RNA dependent, uh, sorry, our RNA genome in turquoise. And now here's our hemagglutinin protein here bound to our sialic acid in the membrane of the cell. Okay, and what you can see is that it's gradually endocytosing this uh, virion particle into uh, the cell, basically. So what eventually is going to happen is uh, that you're going to have a cell. So let me show this now. Uh, in fact, I'll go over the page to show this. What is eventually going to happen is that the whole virus is going to be taken into an endosome, basically. So let me show this. If we have our cell here, our host cell that's going to be attacked by the virus, then inside that host cell you will now have an endosome, okay, which was made up, uh, which was made from the, um, uh, obviously it's out of proportion, but it's to show you the point, um, which was made from the plasma membrane of the cell, and then in here is going to be our uh, influenza virus particle here. So here's the viral envelope, here's the uh, nuclear capsid in the center here. Here's our um, RNA genome, our negative sense RNA. Here's our RNA dependent RNA polymerase. So let me color things in. So here is our enzyme. Um, here's our RNA genome. Okay. Then we've got our capsid around the outside. Then we've got our viral envelope, which still has our hemagglutinin protein in here in red. Okay, which is still bound to our sialic acid, which is in the endosome membrane now. So here's our sialic acid. Okay, and uh, let me just label things up. So this is sialic acid here. Sialic acid. And uh, this is our hemagglutinin protein here. So this is hemagglutinin. Okay, right, and we're going to need to draw the other important proteins that were in the viral envelope as well, so let's put those in. So we remember neuraminidase, well neuraminidase isn't going to be important yet, so I'll draw it in just for completeness, but the one that is going to become important now is the M2 ion channel. Okay, so I'll draw in the M2 ion channel. Ooh, have I got space here? Have a go. There's our M2 ion channel, okay? And remember, it's, a pr it's going to allow protons, basically, to move through it. We'll have the M2 ion channel in orange here. Okay, so in orange, we have the M2 ion channel. So let me label those two up as well. So this is neuraminidase, which will become important much, much later. Neuraminidase. Minidase. And uh, this, then, is is the M2 ion channel here, so the M2 ion channel. Now, uh, it's a normal physiological process, endocytosis. What happens when we endocytose uh, things? What do we do to endosomes? Well, the general thing that we do is we, in, it, we pump protons into them, basically. We acidify them. So what starts happening is we start raising the proton concentration in this endosome. So let me show uh, protons in with this yellow color here. So what's going to happen is we're going to keep pumping in protons into this endosome, like so, okay? 
from the cytoplasm of the cell. So we're going to raise the concentration of protons. I hope that those are visible on the camera. We're going to raise the concentration of protons. If not, I'll just write protons to show that we're pumping in protons into this endosome. So we're acidifying the endosome. Okay, now something important now happens to the hemagglutinin protein. When you lower the pH of the endosome, which is the same thing as pumping in protons, a higher proton concentration means a lower pH, a more acidic pH. Okay, when the pH goes down to around 6, so when the pH gets to 6, which is getting more acidic, it's acidic of neutral, basically. It's lower than 7, which is generally taken to be the neutral pH. Okay, um, then what happens is hemagglutinin changes conformation. Now, if I remind you of the structure of hemagglutinin, remember, hemagglutinin consisted of this homotrimer, so I'll draw it out here. So it consists of this homotrimer of these free hemagglutinin proteins. And then if we looked at the structure of a single one of these hemagglutinin proteins, it was like so. We have this hemagglutinin 2 head here and this hemagglutinin 1 uh, tail here. Now what's going to happen? When the, um, when the pH goes down to 6, what's going to happen is that the hemagglutinin uh, mon monomer here is going to change conformation so that it adopts a conformation that looks more like this basically. It sticks these uh, fusion peptides as they're called out. So this is what's known as a fusion peptide and it is hydrophobic so it interacts well with phospholipid bilayers. So this is a hydrophobic fusion peptide. Okay, so what's going to happen is that um, this hemagglutinin molecule here is going to stick out, um, stick out these fusion peptides, which are going to go into the membrane of the endosome. So let me highlight the endosome membrane. So in pink here, this is the endosome membrane. The membrane inside of that is the viral envelope that's been swallowed into the endosome. Okay, so hemagglutinin is now going to stick out fusion peptides into this um, membrane. And because there are three subunits of hemagglutinin, you're going to have three uh, fusion peptides coming out into this membrane. Now, um, what will now happen is that the rest of hemagglutinin will then change conformation later. So it's stuck the fusion peptide out. The fusion peptide is now in the um, endosome membrane. What's going to now happen is hemagglutinin will change conformation again, and it will start to retract the fusion peptide, so it will start to go back to a state like this. But the fusion peptide is now in this membrane here. So what's going to happen is it's going to pull this membrane closer and closer and closer. When you retract the fusion peptide, it's going to pull the membrane of the endosome with it. And that is then going to bring the endosome membrane in very close proximity with the viral envelope. And what's going to happen is those two membranes are going to fuse okay and that will release the contents within the um, viral envelope basically so let me draw this happening so if um, in fact let me highlight the viral envelope as well so we know exactly what we're talking about I'll highlight the viral envelope in blue so what's going to happen is these two membranes the viral envelope and the endosome are going to fuse okay so if I draw just this endosome membrane out again, so if this is the endosome membrane here, what's going to happen is it's going to become continuous with the viral membrane here, okay? Like so. So they're going to fuse. So this was the viral membrane in blue here, okay? And here, in purple, this was the endosome membrane, but they are now effectively one and the same thing. And that's going to release the contents of the uh, viral, uh, vi or the virion particle, basically. So you might say, well, okay, the whole nucleocapsid is now just going to float out of there. Wrong. Something else is going to happen before this fusion event occurs. I have told you about how protons have been pumped into this endosome, basically, to acidify it. What I've drawn here is just the protons. As you can see, my yellow dots, I've just drawn them in this 
endosome compartment, but the reality is they are going to go into the viral compartment as well. They're going to get across this viral envelope and go into the viral part compartment. And this is extremely important for the life cycle of influenza. And uh, the way that this happens, basically, is the protons go through this M2 channel here into uh, the um, inside of the viral envelope. So that's how, when protons go up in the endosome, they also go up within the virion particle. They go through the M2 ion channel. So here are the protons now within the virion particle. And these protons are going to break down this nuclear, or sorry, this capsid proteins here, which means that by the time this fusion event occurs, the capsid has broken down and has released the RNA genome of the virus and the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. So what's actually going to come out here is the RNA genome of the virus here in turquoise and this RNA-dependent RNA polymerase here in purple. Okay, so what has overall happened now is that your cell has this RNA genome, this negative sense RNA genome here. So this is our negative sense RNA genome. Sense RNA genome in turquoise here. And we also have our RNA dependent RNA polymerase enzyme which is coming uh, with it. And basically what's going to happen is these two together are going to start using the cell to do what they want. And they're going to use it basically to make more virus particles. RNA dependent RNA polymerase. Now, to show you how important this step of protons going into the viral envelope and breaking down the uh, capsid proteins is, if you block this M2 ion channel, then you don't get protons moving from the endosome into the viral particle, and the nuclear capsid remains whole. And then what will happen is when these two membranes fuse, the nucleocapsid will come out into the cytoplasm, and basically it won't work. You have to have the nuclear capsid broken down by some process, and this uh, occurs by the movement of these protons into uh, the viral particle. And if you block this M2 ion channel, which you can do with certain drugs, then it's that, it's, that stops the uh, influenza viral replication cycle. Uh, and it's, um, these drugs are used clinically. So the two drugs which can, are capable of doing this are amantadine, amantadine, and rimantadine is the other one. Rimantadine. So they are both M2 ion channel blockers. Oh dear, amantadine. Amantadine, there we go. Okay, so amantadine and rimantadine, they both work by blocking the M2 ion channel and therefore stopping uh, the release of the uh, RNA genome and the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase of the influenza virus um, from its uh, capsid, basically. And that prevents the virus from actually replicating within the cell because if the RNA genome and the RNA dependent RNA polymerase are just trapped inside the nucleocapsid, uh, then they're not going to be able to actually hijack the cell machinery. Okay, so those are very effective anti influenzal drugs. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.